you think it's not that bad of, I mean, it's steep, but it's all, you know, for all intents and purposes for professionals, it's a short climb. But after 125 miles in the blazing afternoon sun, it is hell on earth. The climb really starts at, on Quest, what is it, what is it called? Quest, Quest Haven. Quest Haven, yeah. Come on, watch this now. five mile climb and I thought five miles is really long. <laughs> climb Pro popped up and it was like you have five miles and 1500 feet of vert to go jump over this little rod and get back on your bike in the sand. I was like, huh. Oh. That time in the dirt climbing was absolutely brutal and I'm pretty sure every single person who rode it would agree with me. Went to shit. There was one guy that was with us on the road that was just ahead of me, and he was pretty funny. He kept looking back, and I was like, I'm still here, <laughs> but like barely. <laughs> and he and I were both squiggling up the hill, which is always something that's very embarrassing. France is going on as we speak. There's definitely a little bit of that, like, oh, it would be really nice to be there, but I think it's only getting more dangerous, more cutthroat, and it seems like road cycling is just fighting itself versus versus these races trying to support each other and grow something together, racers and organizers together. So honestly, this year I was able to really enjoy the tour as a fan. I part of me does wish I could kind of like try to go toe to toe with some of those guys in the mountains and see where I would stack up still. But that said, this has been the best move of my career. And I've had people tell me I smile a lot more than I used to because I'm able to just unapologetically be me instead of try to fit the mold of what a world tour pro would be. So there's no FOMO. For me, in the triathlon world, it's a very, I joke about it, it's like a midlife crisis male sport where, you know, they decided to buy a $30,000 rocket ship and they dragged their family to the most random places and it's a totally different scene. To jump now into this gravel world, it's a mix of, 
you know, ex-pros that were in the Peloton and, you know, people like me that are kind of like, I'm a solid Cat 5, I've done one Criterium race. I have to humble myself to the fact that I am a mammal, and mammals uh, do age. When you're over 40, just wait for that first cramp to hit you in your legs. I can do a one hour ride, so I, I tend to break up the, uh, the BWR in one hour increments. And then I take a, a salt pill uh, every hour to celebrate completing that ride. And then I reset my mind to just do a one hour ride. Uh, because as, a, as an older, older rider, it really is physiologically improbable to finish a BWR, and it's um, psychologically very, very difficult. But anybody can ride a bike for an hour on a beautiful day with good people. So I just uh, I focus on that, and I do not burn any matches. I don't really have any expectations. I just want to ride the best I can. I want to ride hard and see where I'm at. I don't want to just go out and coast and try to finish the race. That's never really been my MO. If I'm going to do a sport, I want to, you know, try to compete. <laughs> it does require some technical skill to find success at this race. Technical skill could also just be not crashing or not flatting and crashing and flatting are slower than not crashing or flatting. It's a huge advantage, right? How did I get to this point in my life or how did I get to the race? <laughs> well, how long have I been into this road stuff? I've been into this for about three years now. I was riding Pro BMX before. Put up or let that go. Put up or let that go. You sit up and lift that bro. I've been trying to get in shape, but I lift that slow. I tore my knee really bad. I tried to do one more year, tore it again. And then I was kind of like, I'm out. Like, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna be an athlete. I don't think I'm gonna do anything. And my brother was like, why don't you just get on a road bike? And I was like, oh, I'll never do that. I'll never ride a road bike. It's lame, blah, blah, blah. Those guys wear tight clothes. Three years later, I'm at BWR, like full training plan. I don't know, it's, it's a pretty crazy story. The field of the Belgian waffle ride this year is the best it's ever been, men and women. Whereas in 2019, I was kind of the, the world tour guy coming in, and the only one for that matter. Uh, now you have Alex Howes from EF, who's one of my best friends. He was a groomsman at my wedding, so luckily I know all the moves he's going to try to make. Keegan Swenson got the better of me at a uh, at Belgian Waffle Ride Cedar City. Hopefully this is more of a road race, so maybe I'll have the upper hand again. Those two guys are kind of my, my main danger men. Ted King is always formidable. Eddie Anderson is now the world's first current World Tour gravel specialist. He only races gravel for a World Tour team. So it's a, it's a, it's a very strong field. I've got my work cut out for me. All you can do though is, you know, do your homework and make sure you show up the best way you can and then it's, it's just all about luck on race day. about gravel racing being this slow rollout and celebration on the bike and all of a sudden we were fighting for a whole shot like a short track mountain bike race and it felt like a field sprint you know a pro road race and I was just like oh my god like if this is this is on I have to like hone in now I 
am most scared of the beginning with Lemon Twistenberg and the women starting five minutes behind the men. I think that there could be a traffic jam. Start of the Belgian waffle ride is unlike any other start in gravel that I've experienced yet. So, how did you get here? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> how did you get here? I woke up and I rolled out of bed and I walked into the room and uh, sat down on the drum set. To this place in time, to the BWR. I've suited up for and shown up for, I guess, eight times now. Uh, so this will be uh, this will be number nine. going so far? It's wonderful. It's awesome. I'm not even shot, am I? No, it's good. Oh.
So in August of 2018, I was riding with a teammate, a former teammate and a roommate. We were on a nice coffee shop ride near my house, getting ready for a Colorado Classic. We were in the middle of a turn, taking a left onto a bike path, and a driver of an Airstream um, passed us, speeding over a double yellow with low visibility. I took the weight of the Airstream to my body, and I broke a bunch of stuff, ended up getting diagnosed with PTSD a couple months later, fought my way back to race the 2019 season. Coming back in 2021 is like, meant a lot to me to be able to finally make my entrance into gravel and be like, I am relevant. I am still a really amazing racer and you know I'm I'm here to, to show people a lot this weekend. I love the feeling of being able to push yourself and measure the gains. If I get a QOM, I think it's almost cooler to go back and beat that best time than it is to, you know, only go after it if someone else took it from you. I think the idea of like constantly improving yourself, beating your own best. I would love to be the fastest, you know, gravel racer. It's pretty fun having done two. I feel like I've already learned a ton. Racing is very different than shorter Strava efforts and things like that. And so it's fun to get back into this race world and be like, ooh, should I have gone faster? Would I have blown up if I go faster? And I think as we do these courses, like a lot of these girls that I'm going up against are like, this is my fifth time here. And I'm like, well, you would have known that, you know, after that climb, there was a great recovery descent and I didn't know that. It's an interesting position that you're in, like the idea of like, what does it mean to be fast? And then with that, like, once you are fast, you kind of have a platform, and how do you use that platform? I'm a dirt bag in a van, living by a river or a lake. I'm living by a lake right now. <laughs> How did I get here? I pitched my then world tour team in 2019 to let me do an alternative race while I was preparing for the tour of California. And I did it and I was privileged and lucky enough to win it and the outpouring from that kind of got those gears turning and winning the Belgian Waffle Ride in 2019 was that aha moment where it made me realize that this could be a viable career in its own right and not just an alternative race. Maybe this wasn't gonna be an alternative race within a few years time. And it was because of this race that I am here now doing races like this and others like it full time. Yeah, how's it going so far? Give us a little recap. It's a little uh, spicier. Yeah? We like spicy. Uh, initial dirt section. But, you know, we're kind of all uh, at peace now for the moment. What to do here? Blow your race seat. They say, can we use soon?
bottom of Black Canyon. This elite group of three racers coming through. It was, I was happy that there was a breakaway because it would hopefully give us some reason to work together instead of, you know, just some chicken shit following each other's stuff. So it kept the race honest. They took a gap and we were not pulling it back very fast. So I definitely started to worry. Peter Stetna leading the charge there. Eddie Anderson right with him. I think I've definitely transitioned away from like hopefully just being fast on Strava. I love being fast, but I think one of the most important things I've at least realized is like you can be fast, but you can also be friendly, and you can also like not take yourself so seriously. But in front of you is uh, Casey Armstrong, Katarina Nash, uh, and the Orange I Shield girl. Yeah, you're doing great. I really love the like technical stuff. That's like the gravel kind of like really right away coming up from Moto and BMX. I was like, oh, this is perfect for me. Like I love like sliding my bike around turns and like descending is big too. Like that's always fun. That's kind of what got me into it. Learn how to climb just so I could descend because I thought it was so fun to bomb the hills. <laughs> plane came via Denver Airport to San Diego. How are you? What do you I don't know what you mean? Here. Like here doing this. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know it was <laughs> so deep. I'm a very literal person. <laughs> How did I get to this point in my life? Ooh. Ugh. How did I get here? I've been racing and riding bikes since my freshman year of college, and I just can't seem to stop. I've ridden bikes so long, and with BMX I've traveled all over the world. Like. There was really nothing new for me to do on a BMX bike, and I thought that was bikes in general until I got onto a road bike and realized these guys are flying away from me up climbs and I need to learn how to pedal, I need to learn how to pace myself, zone training, like there's so many things that I'm all like, it like re-got my like 
I don't know like what you would call that. I'm so excited about like learning a new kind of bike. It's like when I first started riding bikes again. In 2015, I came around a corner in a big race in Spain, going 40 miles an hour, and there was an unmarked metal pole in the middle of the road, so it was blunt force, 40 miles an hour, direct hit to the kneecap, shattered the kneecap, the tibia, plateau all the way down, five ribs, LCL, two weeks in, in pretty bad condition in a Spanish hospital. A lot of teams wrote my career off, and Eventually, I was able to salvage my career and return to the World Tour for another four seasons. You know, the, the bike gives a lot, but it also takes a lot. This is a very dangerous sport. You're riding around in glorified underwear and going at breakneck speeds. Everybody has at least minimum 10, maybe 100 times per race when you come out on the right side of what could have been a very unhappy ending. There's not many sports in the world where you line up on race day knowing there is a very small chance that I will die today. And there's cycling is one of those sports. I wrote myself off about 10 times today. I, uh, I did not have a clean run by any means. You know, my derailleur worked its way loose and I had to stop and get it screwed back in and then chase on the, the highway downhill. Once I kind of came back, I was seeing a bit of red to the Sandy Bandy. And just like 2019, I, I kind of slammed a gel right before that and put the hammer down through there and it started to rupture.
2019 with uh, myself and a few other World Tour colleagues coming in, a bunch of people thought we were going to, you know, show up with our team buses and our massage therapists and our, you know, recovery solutions and all that and just ruin the vibe that is gravel. It very much was not that. Can you get off your feet, Pete? These are legitimate races. They deserve to have people focus on them in their own right. So maybe I will be the, the first gravel pro, whatever that is. So yeah, I'll be the bad guy. I'm going to come and ruin it and take all the fun away from you guys. I was a fool to let you down. Champ. Looks like Mo is caught back onto the group. Got Izzy King as well as Emma. Lauren Di Crescenzo has caught up. One of our mantras growing up was keep your knees bent. So it came from skiing moguls. Sometimes visibility is going to be really bad and you can't really see this huge bump that's in front of you. But if your knees are bent, you can absorb that bump and get through it and kind of figure out the right path down the mountain. Tell him. Sandy Florin, who's a, a good buddy, was up the road. We, you know, shook hands and, and said, you know what, we're racing for the win. We're not going to race for second place. It's all or nothing.
Watch this mount. We worked really well together till um, Quest Havensburg. 42 seconds. Leaders coming through. Leaders coming through. Dismount. 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 I made my move on the climb and I didn't want to be on the downhill with Finsty, so I, uh, I went from the very, very bottom. So what, uh, what went through your head when, when Pete caught you? The whole time I ex was expecting that to happen like so much earlier. <laughs> I was just like, I couldn't really believe that I made it that far. Yeah. Obviously I was bummed because I would love to win, but I was definitely struggling on that last climb with uh, you know, close to 130 miles in the legs. There's no way I could respond to, to Pete's speed uphill. He's just, he's just a god at climbing. Still feeling good. I the next cramp had not come yet, so I was able to just. I knew I was putting time into them, and when you already you know you have that positive energy pushing you up, it's almost like another tailwind, you know, and you could feel it, um, the, the excitement of others, and know that you're riding towards towards victory. started on the dirt, my Garmin flashed five mile climb, and I thought, five miles is really long. <laughs> just repeating to myself, 400 to go, 400 to go, you can do it, don't slow down, don't slow down. And then Katarina just put in a monster attack and thought, don't slow down, don't slow down. So, but she was gone, but. To the top, and there goes Katarina making a move. Katarina's making a move. Hannah can't respond. Katarina's going to And 
exciting finish. I didn't really know how much, what kind of gap I had at that point. So I, I stood up out of every corner and tried to just keep it all the way until the last U-turn to the finish, so yeah. just to like stay on my bike, eat enough, drink enough, make it to the finish, have a have a good time, but you just you can't have a super good plan, you know. And I'm definitely I am intimidated by the distance, so I I don't go crazy early on and I think that that pays off, you know, like in the short races I'm quite the opposite. I have, you know, managed to blow myself through cyclocross race the first 20 minutes, but with the distance it's really like I, I need to be smart about this and do everything right to kind of, you know, get to the finish, so, yeah. You know, as long as I'm defending champion, um, hopefully I don't keep having the pressure on myself, but uh, I'll, I'll be back next year until someone takes it off my shoulders. Seriously, like the guys that win races don't necessarily win this one. This is like cuckoo. It is. It's a cuckoo. It's a cuckoo race. It's not normal.
was gonna get off my bike if it wasn't recorded. <laughs> Went to shit. Nope. <laughs> the climb really starts at, on Quest. What is it, what is it called? Hey, Quest, Quest Haven. Quest Haven. Yeah. So I did that climb two days ago with fresh legs, and I was like, ah, short, not that bad. We did not go all the way to the bottom, to the dirt section that starts you in that climb. So when the little climb pro popped up and it was like, you have five miles and 1,500 feet of vert to go. Dismount, dismount, Jump over this dismount. little rod and get back on your bike in the sand. I was like, oh, it's gonna be really interesting. That time in the dirt climbing was absolutely brutal and I'm pretty sure every single person who wrote it would agree with me. Yeah, you think it's not that bad of, I mean, it's steep, but it's all, and for all intents and purposes for a professional, it's a short climb. But after 125 miles in the blazing afternoon sun, it is hell on earth, no matter who you are. There was one guy that was with us on the road that was just ahead of me and he was pretty funny. He kept looking back and I was like, still here, <laughs> but like barely. <laughs> and he and I were both squiggling up the hill, which is always something that's very embarrassing. Uh, hope you guys got a lot of footage of that. If you crash right now, it's going to be super embarrassing, so don't do that. <laughs> um, kept it upright and made it over the finish line, and my mom was standing right there uh, and got to give her a big hug, so that's cool. So being able to suffer like this on a bike is a privilege that not everybody has. Knowing that, like when you're going up that last climb, remembering that not everyone gets to do this uh, is really important. I don't know if that answers your question of how I got here. <laughs> Normally, like a super consistent rider, so I will accept that leg day. This road and gravel stuff is different than other sports, like. Just because there's no shortcuts really, like it's just time is what I'm learning. And I'm not an expert at all, maybe I have this wrong, but it's just that grind, like staying on it, staying consistent, like don't miss workouts, like, and it all just adds up and adds up and you get better. So I've just been trying to get stronger and stronger. How like they weigh in skills versus power, I don't, uh, I don't know, hopefully the skills come in more because I still got a ways to go on the power, I feel like, to be at all these real guys' level. Yeah, it's bleeding. 
Oh, fuck that. <laughs> It sucked, I fell like pretty early, like 20 miles, and I just smashed my pedal into the rock and broke the whole thing up, so. 115 miles on one flat pedal. <laughs> and one foot with my hand bleeding, so I'm like holding the bars like any way that I, like it's right where you hold the bars. I don't know where that was, but my legs just like fully locked. We had to get off to go through the gate. And uh, yeah, I was just like, I stepped off and my legs are just like stuck. So I just had to sit there. I mean, I've done it before. I just had to sit there until I could move my legs again. But after that, it was just survival. It's gonna be all right. I saw the turnoff for wafer and waffle, and I'm just, I'm screwed. And I wanted to turn left so bad and just hit the wafer and head home. And I was like, like no, like my family is out here and like, my girl did so much watching the baby and like, helped me so much to like, get here and train and do all that. And I'm like, I can't be scared. Call it. Like, I didn't want to let all them down. With like 30 miles to go, I sat down on a bench under a tree and I called uh, Janessa and I told her, I was like, I don't think I can finish. Like, I just told her, I'm like, I was like, I'm done. And she was like, What do you mean? Like, what do you mean you're not gonna finish? Like, what are you gonna do? I realized, like, what am I? Like, like, what am I gonna do? Like, show up in the car to like you guys and everything. The whole family came out. My mom, the baby. Like, we've been in a hotel for three days. Like, yeah, and you can't not finish. <laughs> This year, my, my major concern is, honest to goodness, finishing. It's so improbable for anyone to finish this. I hope not. He usually does that. I, I say I'm never doing that again. Every year.
โอ้โห